Hi, my name is Caroline. Welcome to my channel. This video is going to be about everything you'll ever need to know about applying to law schools in Ontario, as well as how I got into the two best law schools in Canada, University of Toronto Law and Osgoode Hall Law School. The law school application process can be very complicated and be very confusing. I've done a lot of research. Um, I talked to a lot of people, I've read a lot of articles, and this is all the information I've gathered on applying to law schools. Everything you need to know, all the hidden tips and tricks that they don't tell you, and just how to create an amazing application. I've broken it down into a few parts. So first, I'm going to talk about things that you need to have to apply to law school. Then I'm going to talk about how you apply to law school. Um, I did also apply to law school in the U.S. So let's get into it. The first thing you need to apply to law school is a GPA. You can find information on what a good GPA is on every school's website. So U of T or Osgood or any law school that you're applying to will release information on their past incoming classes and they'll say what the median GPA was. You always want to be aiming for that as your GPA. So things to know about your GPA. Different schools calculate your admissions GPA differently. You have to look at your three best years. Some schools look at your two best years. Um, and so if perhaps your first year marks were a little weaker or you had one year you didn't do so, super well, there's definitely some wiggle room. Keep in mind that when you apply to law school, you're still sending your entire transcript. You're not just sending your full three years, your full, your best two years or whatever it is. So even though they calculate your admissions GPA from your best three years, they're still assessing you based on your full transcript. Um, in terms of your GPA, I'm sure all of your schools have, you know, credit or credit options, withdrawals. Schools definitely see this and it's not necessarily like a make or break kind of thing. But if you do have a lot of credit or credits, if you do have a lot of like, withdrawals, it's um, it's a good idea to maybe try and explain why you have that. Schools generally give you the option of writing like an addendum, like a GPA addendum. Something else to consider for your GPA is where you did your undergrad, what programs you study, those are factors in your law school application. But usually this is only in a more beneficial way because they want a diverse incoming class. They don't want just law students who've studied political science and social sciences and history or whatever. They want students who've studied STEM. They want music students. They want people from a variety of backgrounds. And so um, this causes is them to be a little bit more lenient. For example, if you're coming from a harder background like engineering, if your GPA is a little bit lower, that works in your favor because you've come from engineering. Um, I've talked to one admissions officer who was like, how do we compare a music pro program to like an engineering program? And then I've talked to another admissions officer who was like, yeah, we definitely do compare as well as adjust for where your undergrad comes from. Law schools know that it's, certain, it's harder at certain schools to get higher marks versus another. Um, some schools are more likely to inflate their marks. Law schools know this. I've talked to law school um, admissions officers who've told me that they have their own version of way of standardizing GPAs. I went to the University of Toronto for my undergraduate. I just graduated. I applied to law school in my fourth year. When I first applied to law schools, I had a GPA of 3.54 as U of T calculated it. When I applied to law schools, my GPA got standardized. So the GPAs the law schools actually received was about a 3.52. I studied international relations, criminology, history, and political science. So I did a specialty, a major, and two minors. I did have a couple of credits, no credits. I had late, no late withdrawals. Um, I had no failed courses. I did do summer school. Um, I didn't have a full course load my entire four years. Um, I Sometimes I would do four and a half credits instead of the full five credits. Some years I would do six credits. Um, my GPA was definitely lower than, I, than the schools I was aiming for, but I personally didn't write an addendum because my GPA didn't really have a trend. I didn't have one year where it was particularly bad. I just submitted my GPA and hoped that my other three sections would make up for it. The second thing you need to apply to law school is an LSAT. Um, there's no secrets to your LSAT. It's just the score you get is the score you send in. 
Um, like the same thing with the GPA, you can find school medians on their website and those are a good number to be aiming for. I made a whole video on how I studied for the LSAT as well as tips and tricks for that that I'll link in the description. There's nothing wrong for taking an LSAT. Um, if you have two LSAT scores available and one is higher, school would gladly take the higher one. It, it shows that you've improved, it shows you can score well, you should, it looks good for them. They have a higher median LSAT. To be competitive for law schools, like you have seen Osgood, you want to be in the 160s. For Osgood, low to 160, low to mid 160s. For U of T, mid to high 160s. Um, I know that my GPA was lower, so I was really aiming for a high LSAT score, so 172, which I believe was a huge factor in offsetting my lower GPA. So this definitely goes to prove that like you can control, uh, you can kind of offset a weaker part of your application and the thing is LSAT stores you have a little bit more control over because you can study you can retake um, it's a good idea to take the LSAT at least the summer before you apply that way if you get a score that you don't really like you have room to take it again the application cycle usually starts in the fall you can take an LSAT in the January after you apply so scores will so schools will still look at the scores from the January LSAT take after you apply. Um, I wouldn't recommend that being your first take because it leaves no room for error, um, but it's a good kind of backup option if you really want to retake the LSAT. So the third thing is your personal statement. Um, this can really make and break your application. Even if you have a perfect GPA, strong LSAT, if your personal statement is weak, you won't get in. Um, and this is also a great way to make up for weaker numbers. I definitely think that my personal statement was on the stronger side, and so it helped make up for my weaker GPA. Your personal statement is where you tell your story. It lets them know what you bring to the table, who you are as a person other than just your numbers. Um, I think it's important to touch on kind of why you want to go to law school. Um, life experiences that have kind of shaped the way you are, the way you think. Um, why law school should accept you over someone else. What, what makes you unique? This is where the personal statement comes in. I really recommend starting your personal statement, or at least starting to think about your personal statement the summer before you apply. So if you're applying in the fall, start writing the summer. The prompts generally stay the same, so you'll be able to know what schools want. Um, and different schools have different essays, so make sure you really, you're really understanding what the requirements are. Um, also, some schools have more kind of divide their personal statement. So this is how it applying to schools in Ontario differ from the US. In the US, they're just, they just say write a personal statement. But in schools in Ontario, they give more specific prompts. And sometimes schools have several prompts with optional essays. Optional essays are not optional. You write that optional essay. Um, put in the work and do it. Unless, unless it's a diversity statement, which if it doesn't apply to you, obviously don't write it. Optional essays are a great way to show off your writing, which is super important to schools because that's how they assess your academic ability. Perhaps you have a strong GPA, but obviously these schools don't necessarily know what course, the exact content of what courses you take, how hard your professors are. Your personal statement is a great way for schools to really understand what your academic and writing abilities are. So take advantage of those optional essays and share more about yourself. Why wouldn't you want to share more about yourself with law school? It increases your chances. I'm sure you might have heard stories of people writing a poem or writing a, a slogan like 20 times. Unless, you know, you have all like a huge story that centers around poetry or you've been very active in a certain kind of um, issue, don't do that. It comes off very gimmicky and most times people don't succeed with doing something like, like that. Make sure you have people look over your personal statement. Um, if you're comfortable with her, sometimes people write more personal things, but it's always good to get some feedback on it. Um, see if you can get someone to edit it. Sometimes you might miss like grammatical mistakes. Um, it's very important that there are no spelling and grammar mistakes on your personal statement because it will make it look sloppy. Something that you can mention in your personal statements or an optional essay if it's an option um, is something diversity related. Obviously, don't lie about this, only talk about this if it's applicable to you. But if you're an immigrant, if you're a minority, if you're a first generation university student, things like that are good things to touch on. Don't, and don't just mention it, don't just be like, oh, I'm an immigrant. Talk about how that's kind of shaped your worldview, how that's made you the person you are today. If it hasn't, 
then don't mention it. But um, I think school at Lost Rose really looked for stuff like that. I had an admissions officer from U of T when I was talking to her about my personal statement. She told me that, oh, you should totally write that you're a Chinese immigrant. I didn't even mention a diversity thing. I was talking about something different. And she completely mentioned that unsolicited. Um, in your personal statement, it's always a good idea to talk about why a specific law school. So make sure you're doing research into kind of what a law school is known for, what are maybe some of its selling points for a program that you might be interested in, and talk about why you want to attend that specific law school. Don't mention another law school in by accident. So if you're applying to U of T, make sure you don't say Ottawa in your personal statement or Austria in your, auto, in your personal statement. That's an automatic like X. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, make sure you mention kind of like a Y X law school in your personal statement. Um, if if they give you an optional essay where you can talk about why specifically that school, make sure you you talk about why that school. That's really helpful. My personal statement was quite personal. I talked about some things I struggled with as a child, but I talked about how I've grown from that and how it's become kind of a key part of who I am. I'm interested in studying international law and my sense of community is very important to me. So I talked a lot about my extracurriculars, my sense of community, um, and what I want to accomplish for law school. The first thing you need for your application are what they call softs. So these are things like extracurriculars, your letters of recommendation, um, everything else about your application that isn't covered in your LSAT, GPA, and your personal statement. Although there is some overlap between personal statement and your softs. So first, letters of recommendation. Um, some schools don't require them. So U of T doesn't require a letter of recommendation, but Osgood does. Usually schools want two to three. I would try and get the max number of recommenders that schools allow. So I, I think Osgood allows three. I had three recommend recommenders. So who should you get to write you a letter of a recommendation? It should be, you should try your best to get academic sources. So your professors. Try to get professors that either you know or that you've done well in. If the first time you're talking to a professor, professor is to ask them for a letter of recommendation, that's not such a good idea. Unless you've done, you know, phenomenal in the class, then, you know, that kind of makes up for it. But try um, and reach out to your professors the year in advance. So if you apply in the fall, try asking your professors in the spring, because often professors like to work on their letters for recommendations well in advance. And this is one of the reasons why I suggest have starting your personal statement in the summer, because it's always a good idea to, if, if you feel comfortable doing so, send your personal statement to your recommender. So your recommender knows kind of what you're going for, what your vibe is. For example, I touched on community, and so I sent on my personal statements to professors who know that I've been very involved in the student community, and they could kind of attest to that in their letters of recommendation. Um, the reason why you want a professor whose class you did well in is because the whole reason of a letter of recommendation is for schools to know that you can excel academically. And so if you did poorly in a class, um, it's hard for a professor to kind of talk about how well you do academically if you didn't do well academically in this class. Also, another great reason to talk to professors that you want recommendations for is they have a lot of great advice to give. You can ask them for advice on your personal statement, on your application, on things you can improve. So other than letters of recommendation, uh, softs also include your extracurriculars. Um, when you apply to Ontario schools, you include your resume sometimes if asked for, and you also include all your extracurriculars on something called a sketch and verifier. So what it is, is you input all your extracurricular activities. It doesn't have to be school related, just basically any activity you've done in your undergrad. Don't put anything in high school. Law schools I'll, don't care what you do in, in high school unless it's like something not high school related. So if you've published a book when you're like 16, that's probably something you would mention. But if you were head president of your debating club in high school, law schools don't care. So you input all this into your sketch and verifiers and you need someone to verify that you've done it. So just leave like a phone number and email of someone, maybe like the club president or a volunteer coordinator or a club member that can attest that you've done what you're saying you're doing. Um, some people say that extracurriculars don't really matter. I personally think, and from the people I've talked to, extracurriculars do matter. I think my extracurriculars are definitely a boost. Um, I know that sometimes extracurriculars can feel like they're not much. 
because you hear about the people who are road stallers, you hear about the people who've been to space camp their entire life, you hear about the people who've published three books by the time they're 17, and you're like, wow, how can I compete against people like that? But you have to remember that the majority of people applying to law school don't have accomplishments like that. You just need to excel kind of at what you do. So if it's something you're passionate about, if you're really passionate about chess, about video games, show that. Tell a story with your extracurriculars and share that. Um, I think extracurriculars can only ever help your application and so it's always good to have as much as possible. So I knew that community was important to me so a lot of extracurriculars of mine were centered around community. I hosted a lot of events, I was a part of a lot of school clubs, I volunteered, and so I really included that in my personal statement as well. So this is where kind of it ties in together. Your personal statement should tell a story and your extracurriculars help you tell that story. Ontario law schools do not interview. So you don't have to worry too much about um, preparing for an interview. That's why your application has to be really strong. So now onto how to apply to law school. Um, Law school applications start in the fall. And so you use something called OSAS, which is part of OUAC. If you just Google O-L-S-A-S, um, I think it stands for Ontario Law School's Application System or something like that. Um, you do everything through that. So you make an account um, and you upload everything. You select what schools you're applying to. I applied to Osgood, U of T, and Ottawa and the OSAS does everything for you. So you submit your transcripts through OSAS, you connect your LSAT score to OSAS, you put your personal statements on OSAS. You don't submit anything to schools directly unless they ask you for it. You put your resume on OSAS. Um, everything is done through OSAS. Is it OSAS or OSAS? Anyways, usually your applications start end of summer, early fall, and the application deadline is always no beginning of November. It's usually November 1st. Um, I think it's been November 1st for like the past few years. Keep that in mind. That is a very early deadline. Um, that means you need to be finished your law school applications like two months into senior year or whatever you're, you're applying. You can apply to law school at a variety of times. You can apply in third year, you can apply in your fourth year, you can apply after taking a year off, you can apply when you're in your master's, you can apply when you're working. The majority of people starting law school don't start it right after their undergrad. So it's important that you're just, that you keep in mind when kind of the dates are and when the deadline is and just apply accordingly. So that is everything I think you need to know in terms of applying to law school. Um, to sum up, you need an LSAT, your GPA, personal statement, and strong softs, which are, you know, letters of recommendation, and your curriculars. I personally had a 172 LSAT, a 3.54 GPA, um, a strong personal statement where I touched on uh, kind of my diversity, my interest in my community, what kind of law I want to study, why I want to attend University of Toronto or Osgood, um, and how kind of my extracurriculars are important to me, and how why I am the person I am today. Um, people who attend law school come from a variety of backgrounds. I think that's, I guess, the whole message of this video. Um, you are a unique person. You bring a lot to the table. Make sure that you express that to law schools. Um, why they want you in their incoming class because lots of people can have a high GPA and high scores but why should you become a lawyer why do they want you so I think if you can kind of really sell yourself like that no matter what your scores are you have a pretty good chance um, obviously it doesn't hurt to have strong scores so make sure you're aiming for every school's median make sure you have a personal strong personal statement strong softs and you'll be fine um, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. I really hope that I covered everything in this video. Thanks for watching.